Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about the most fun commanders in 2021. Let's jump right into it. First up, let's talk about Bell Corrupted Observer. She wants our opponents to lose life, and when they do, we get two colorless mana for each opponent. Now our opponent can also benefit from this, but they can only do so when they make one of our opponents lose life, so we're also promoting our opponents to hurt each other. So we really take advantage of Bell's ability with Vicious Conquistador, Pulse Tracker, and Mardu Shadow Spear. When they attack, each opponent loses one life, and this will get us six colorless mana. And we can get six colorless mana on turn two, which is really good, and can get us cards like Steel Hellkite, Conduit of Ruin or Horizon Stone, which are all great to have, and getting a 5-5 on turn 2 is really silly. Or an artifact that can help us keep our mana if we don't use it that turn. Staff of Nin. This can deal 1 damage to any target when we tap it, and we get an additional card at our upkeep. Baleful Force. This is another great way to draw cards, and it's a budget Phyrexian Arena. It's also a 7-7, which is helpful, but with the 3 black mana in the casting cost, that can be a little difficult to cast sometimes, so we have mana rocks like Arcane Signet, Talisman of Resilience, and these can help us be able to cast it if we don't have enough swamps at the time. So if you love silly amounts of mana, and sillier stuff to cast with it, you're gonna love Belb as your commander. Borgoragmos Enraged. Imagine if your lands became lightning bolts. Now that's possible with our commander. It's also a 7-6 with Trample, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we're going to reveal the top three cards of our library and put all lands into our hand and the rest into our grave. If we discard a land, Borgwaring most deals three damage to a creature or a player. Since we're discarding so many lands, we can have Ramanamp Excavator. This lets us play our lands from our grave, and it's going to save more lands to be in our hand to deal three. Illusionist Bracers lets us double our commander's ability, so if you thought three damage was silly, try six for one land being discarded. Basilisk Caller can give our commander Death Touch, which is really really, really good, because it specifies that he's dealing the damage to a creature, so we're going to instantly kill creatures when we discard a land and that target that creature, even if it's still 3 damage. Barrel Down Soakin' Zon. We can return any number of mountains to our hands, and Barrel Down's gonna deal damage to a creature equal to twice the number of mountains returned. This is an awesome one to get us more lands to our hand, and we can take out a creature as well. We ultimately win the game when we have a combo like Abundance and Keen Sense. When our commander deals damage to an opponent, we draw a card, and we're dealing damage to our opponents when we discard a land, and we choose to target a player. Abundance lets us choose a land or non-land when we go to draw a card, so we'll choose land and eventually kill all of our opponents. So if you love a different way to play magic, Magic, this is the one for you. Brina the Demagogue. We want players to hit each other, and when they do, they draw cards, and we get counters. More specifically, they have to hit an opponent that is not us and doesn't have the lowest life total. The cool thing is that we can be this player, so we can draw and still get counters. So this is definitely a group hit each other deck. Orzhov Advocates. This promotes giving our opponents and us counters if they don't attack us, so their creatures get bigger and ours as well. Hopefully they'll swing at each other. When Bore Muse and Ghostly Prison. This is going to help us not be attacked by making players pay two mana for each creature when they attack us. Martial Impetus and Parasitic Impetus. We promote combat with these, and they can't attack us if able. We're going to make their creatures bigger, and they're going to hit our opponents, so hopefully our opponents will kill each other before they kill us. Court of Grace and Court of Ambition. I like these because Monarch is now in the game, so even if our opponents decide to hit us, that means they become the Monarch, and this opens up for more of a political game. So if you love helping players kill each other, try this one out. Chatterfang Squirrel General. Tokens, tokens, and even more tokens. You can build this in a lot of ways, and I prefer making as many tokens as possible, because Chatterfang gives us squirrels when we make a token, so imagine Verdant Force, normally an okay card that gets us a Saperlene at each upkeep. Now we get a Saperlene and a Squirrel when we have our commander. Awakening Zone. At our upkeep, we get an Eldrazi so we can sack that to get a colorless mana. This is one of my favorite ways to ramp in the game. Ogre Slumlord. Whenever a non-token creature dies, we make a rat token, and those rats have death touch, so it's going to help us likely not be swung at when we have these creatures. Avenger of Zendikar. You get the point. Make as many tokens as you can, and then Blood Artist, Falcon Wrath Noble, and Zulaport Cutthroat. We go all out on Aristocrat on our opponents and sack our creatures with either Chatterfang's ability or Carrion Feeder and Viscerous Seer. So we can deal a huge amount of damage with all the tokens that we have or overrun. We give our creatures plus three, plus three, and trample. Imagine four, four squirrels with trample attacking you. That's nuts. Edric, Spy Master of Trust. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. So a little similar to Brina 
arena, encouraging our opponents to not hit us and hit each other. I personally like building hug decks so we can add Kami of the Crescent Moon and Dictate of Crufix. This is even more card draw and things get out of hand really quick with these. Rites of Flourishing. This is another great hugs card that lets players play an additional land and they get to draw an extra card. Heartbeat of Spring and Dictate of Karametra. This is going to double the amount of mana players should be making. Keyword is should. With all the extra mana that we're getting, huge spells are going to come out a lot faster than they should. Collective Voyage is a neat one. Each player can pay mana into this and all players get that many basics onto the battlefield tapped. Howling Mine and Font of Mythos. Another great way for drawing cards. By now players should love us. That is my hope anyways. Braids Conjurer Adept. A great commander and also a great card for the 99. You can put an artifact creature or land from your hand onto the battlefield as well as your opponent. So with all the favors we're doing for our opponents, there is a hope that we aren't the first player out of the game, but if you love chaos and you don't care about winning, this deck is one I have to recommend. Izuri Claw of Progress. You want power two or less creatures to enter the battlefield under your control. And when they do, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your combat, you put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature, where X is the number of experience counters you control. This is going to add up quickly with our mana dorks like Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystic. These are going to help us ramp, and we're getting an experience counter from them. Fathom Mage lets us draw a huge amount of cards. When counters are put on her, we draw that many cards. Gyre Sage, we get a green mana for each one on one counter on it, so this is a great way to ramp us as well. Herald of Secrets. Now all the creatures we control with plus one plus one counters on them are unblockable. So imagine a 9-9 Cold Eye Selkie with unblockable. Huge amount of cards that we're going to draw and a huge amount of damage. So small creatures make a big difference, especially with our commander. Even if we put Azuri back into the command zone, we're going to still keep those experience counters. Kanaios and Tiro of Miletus. This is another great group hug deck, but now we have white and red added to the mix, so we can add Quain, Itinerant Meddler, which can help with card draw for all players, and they gain one life. Humble Defector, this lets us draw two, and then we can pass it on to an opponent, they get to draw two, and then they pass it on. Fractured Identity, one of my favorite cards in a deck like this. Imagine creating a copy of Howling Mind for each opponent. Trust me, it's silly. Mana Flare, it's similar to the green enchantments that let us double our mana, but it's red. It's hard not to mention the previous cards that we talked about in Edric's deck, but any kind of card that promotes more card draw and more mana, it's really good in this type of deck. Mael the Anima. If you love cheating out huge creatures, you just found the right commander. We can pay 6 mana and look at the top 5 cards of our library and get a creature with power 5 or greater onto the battlefield and put the rest onto the bottom of our library. So we really take advantage of cheating these creatures out. What's nice is that we're not casting them either so our opponents won't be able to counter these creatures. Some of the huge creatures we have are Blazing Archon. It's usually a 9 mana spell, but we can cheat it out with Mael's ability for only 6. It's a 5-6 flyer with creatures can't attack you. This is great because 1. Our opponents can attack us so they're going to hit each other. Two, this still allows us to attack and three, it's going to postpone the potential damage we would be receiving. Molten Primordial. This is another great creature to cheat out and when it ETBs we gain control of one creature each opponent controls. We get to untap them and they gain haste until end of turn. This is a powerhouse of a card and it also has haste itself. Challenger Troll. It may not look like much because it's only five mana and we'd essentially be paying six for a five mana creature if we use Mael's ability, but it says each creature you control with power four or greater can't be blocked by more than one creature. This is an amazing card when our creatures have trample because if our opponents try to block with a chump blocker or a smaller creature like Llanowar Elves to our Garrick's Horde, we are still dealing them the leftover damage not blocked. We can give all of our creatures trample with Aggressive Mammoth. This is an 8-8 with trample that says other creatures you control have trample. This is a silly card for 6 mana and normally we don't get this good of a card. Now besides trample, giving our creatures haste is important as well. Rhythm of the Wild. Our creature spells can't be countered and non-token creatures we control have riot, which means they can either get a plus one plus one counter or they gain haste. Giving our creatures haste is very powerful and will definitely help us overwhelm our opponents. So if you love huge creatures and cheating them out, try mail the anima. Osgear the Reconstructor. Osgear loves artifacts and wants us to give us twice as many as we should be getting. He also has a nifty sack outlet on him that can give a creature plus two plus zero until end of turn so while we sack artifacts to later get two of them we can hit our opponents in the meantime with osgear we have the potential to cast soul ring for one mana tap soul ring and get two mana sacrifice it to osgear leaving us with one mana then we use the one mana with osgear's second ability to tap him we're going to exile soul ring from our graveyard and now we have four 
mana. This is super silly and extremely easy to do things like this with Ozgear. Imagine having two Mere Battle Spheres for the same mana spent for one of them. We now have eight mirrors instead of the four, and when they attack, they're going to deal X damage for however many mirrors we tap for them. So an additional eight damage when we tap the mirrors. Acre Wellspring, this is a great way to draw cards in the deck. When it ETBs, and when it's put into the grave, we draw a card. So we cast it, it ETBs, we draw a card. We sack it to Ozgear, and we're going to draw another card. We use Ozgear's ability to bring it back to the battlefield, and we get two of them. So we draw two cards, we sack the tokens, draw two more cards. So potentially six cards after all of this is done. Solemn Simulacrum, when it ETBs, we get a basic land onto the battlefield tapped, and when it dies, we draw a card. There's lots of great artifacts for the deck and plenty of options to upgrade it as well. If you love artifacts and abusing that you now get two of them for the price of one, try out Ozgear. Varian Voice of Duality. Instants and sorceries are great, but now let's make them even better. When we cast or copy an instant or sorcery, if that triggers a permanent we control, we will trigger that permanent's triggered ability an additional time. So with Varian, it has Magecraft, and this is a triggered ability. When we cast or copy an instant or sorcery, Varian gets plus one plus one, or in this case, plus two plus two. Swarm Intelligence. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we can copy that spell. So with our commander, we can do this twice. Yikes. Young Pyromancer. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we're going to create a 1-1 red elemental creature token, which is normally super good, and now that we get two 1-1s is even better. So we can pay one blue for opt, scry one, draw a card, and then we make two 1-1s. Um, this is broken, and I love it. Gutter Snipe normally deals two damage when we cast an instant or sorcery, and now it's going to deal four. So again, if we cast a card like Opt for one blue mana, we deal each opponent four damage. So our commander will likely be a kill on sight commander. So of course we have ways to save Varian with negate, saw it coming, and disrupt. Which again can trigger our permanents while we're trying to save ourselves or the table from whatever threats there are because we are definitely not the threat. Stormkiln Artist. Do you love mana? Well, this is how you make mana and this is how you make silly things happen. We can cast Cerulean Wisps for one blue and target creature becomes blue until end of turn and we untap it and we draw a card. This will trigger Stormkiln Artist and we'll make two treasure tokens, AKA two mana. So we ramped off of one blue mana that drew us a card and don't forget, this is also triggering our commander in whatever silly permanents we have out as well. My favorite card is Archmage Emeritus. We can cast or copy an instant or sorcery and we'll draw a card. When we cast Thought Scour. This is going to mill a player for two, and we draw a card. Then we can draw two more cards from our commander, so we literally just cast an Ancestral Recall. I am the most powerful being in the universe. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to purchase any of these decks, they will all be in the description down below if you want to check them out and you help support the channel when you purchase your cards through TCG Player. And it doesn't cost anything extra when you buy your cards. Thank you to the patrons who directly support the channel, and you can also become a $10 patron to see your name at the end of the videos, and you get an exclusive altar sleeve each month. Be sure to comment down below and subscribe for more Mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.